Afternoon, everyone. Happy June 20th. Ready for the summer solstice. Uh, I wanted to respond to you having read the last submission of your poetry responses and to accentuate some of the tools that we're working towards now as we get to the middle of the semester and beyond um, and uh, talk about some of the upcoming assignments. Um, first, uh, just a note, some of you, a number of you, uh, were not aware that um, uh, George Lord Brian Byron, George Gordon Lord Byron are indeed the very same individual and that led me, he's a, a magnificent poet, the leader of the romantic movement of the 1820s um, and I, I wanted to make that a point because I think if you've done a little more of your research for the poetry response you might have discovered uh, that fact and um, been able to enlarge and enlighten uh, some of your responses. And most of you forgot that now I am requiring uh, that submission of secondary sources. But well, I'll get to that uh, in, in a moment. Um, so, just a little note about Lord Byron. Um, secondly, yes, the use of secondary sources. So soon. Um, it, it's very important now that you reach out uh, to the opinions of others uh, to add to your own understanding of the stories. That's a, a, a crucial tool that um, is uh, I, I, that I need you to convince me you are aware of, you're able to cite correctly. So all assignments now, until you hear otherwise, are requiring a citation, at least one, to a secondary source. And of course a continued use of citations to your primary source, uh, the story itself. Um... It's also important, I think, to understand what I mean when I say a submission. Yes, it's three paragraphs. Uh, a paragraph with two or three sentences is really not sufficient. And that's what I'm getting from a number of you. You need to really build your paragraphs uh, and give them body, of course. Especially your first paragraph. Remember, going back to composition, how the importance of finding your thesis early on and then using that thesis throughout your other paragraphs. Uh, three minimum doesn't mean you can't give me more. I hope you will give me more than three. And there will be uh, assignments at the end of the class where you will be required to give me more than three. But three is only a minimum. But the clue, the key to this is finding, of course, your thesis statement uh, in your first paragraph. And I, once you develop that tool, uh, that's applicable to just about every kind of paper, research or otherwise, that you're going to be writing uh, during the course of your career uh, as a student. Um, now, in order to develop that thesis, it's remember, it's not just simply stating something that is a fact. It's developing a point of view. And uh, you may not find it. You may find that you have to write uh, a submission, a full-bodied submission, and then go back and develop your thesis afterwards. You may find this a, a better way to go. Now, because we don't do a lot of peer review here uh, in this online session, um, I, I, I can't tell you how important it would be for you to go to Canvas and look at the submissions of other students. And uh, I always like to highlight the, the good work of your peers, and that's what I'm about to do now. So if you check out the, I, I believe this is also, also in one of my uh, 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 the posted announcements that I gave you. Uh, check out especially the work of, uh, of Scott Prentzos, uh Charlotte Strong Armstrong, and Holly Godet. Those are just three examples of Students who tend to give uh, full-bodied responses, they tend to have strong thesis statements, uh, they tend to do better research, and use those as examples for yourselves uh, to improve your own submissions. Um, so please take the opportunity to do that. Um, a note about 
the next assignment, which I believe is due tomorrow, uh, and that is the uh, submission as on the as on the uh, short story um, about uh, 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 the Al Jolson story by M Amy Hempel. Um, think about uh, for for the third part of that question. Uh, you'll note in the storytelling that uh, you know you're given very little information, and you're allowed to uh, discover these two individuals pretty much on your own. You're not given a lot of background, not a lot of subtext. And think back to the stories of um, uh, of um, uh, Raven Carver and Cathedral, of um, Hemingway. Uh, and the hills like white elephants, how little information, how little background you're given, and how much richer the experience is that you discover that on your own. This is a really important uh, uh, tool to begin to develop, and it takes some time, and it takes, it takes having really spent some, time, some careful reading of short stories and comparing those short stories to one another. Um, to not let yourself get frustrated because you don't know all the information you feel you should know. And of course, getting to our discussion about the the next two stories, we often find, as you've discovered, especially in A&P, uh, it's the last paragraph that uh, contains the real the real treasure, the the, um, the the pearl inside the uh, uh, the shell. And um, once you make that discovery, uh, then you can go back and confirm some of the information that you didn't get, and uh, maybe put more importance on on some of those um, those facts that you didn't give as much importance as you as perhaps they deserved. Um, <clears throat> so, um, just a little bit about the next two stories we're going to look at, and I have changed the order. If you're going from uh, the syllabus. Uh, you'll note that there's going to be a little change in the order of the stories. We're going to go from the gift of the magi to uh, the story of the <clears throat> excuse me the story of the white heron, uh, our local local main story by Miss Jewett. Um, simply because I think there are uh, compar uh, comparative elements there that uh, uh, will will pay off if we look at those two stories in in order, and and that uh, connection to that is. Um, when we're when we're developing the ability to analyze s stories, we do want to stay um, on top of some information that's relevant, and the relevance uh, the relevancy uh, is often uh, the time, the era from which these stories emerged. And you'll find with the um, with the gift of the magi and the white heron. Uh, that they come from relatively similar, uh, uh, similar periods. They're within um, <clears throat> 20 years of each other. 1886 the, uh, is uh, the story of the White Heron, and uh, and uh, 1906 the, the O. Henry story, the Gift of the Magi. And 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 the reason for that is that you know historical events, historical uh, epochs, as, as we call them. Um, uh, really changed the world. I mean, think about some of the more the, the more crucial events of the last um, twenty years or so, and the importance of, for instance, uh, 9-11, The importance of the Vietnam War era. Uh, even more important that I think was in, in in our last century, the importance of the two wars, and really the period at the end of the nineteenth century and the beginning of the twentieth century, in which these two stories fit nicely. Uh, th th there was a, a, a massive change in the way artists and everyone really looked at the world because of World War One. It was a, a, a mind-boggling experience that affected not only Europe but also United the United States, and really the first huge event to um, affect both continents. And it also changed the way writers thought about the world. As did World War II, but I think in a way the argument could be made that World War I was even more uh, impacting. There was a place for sentiment in, in, in the, at the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century. We accepted certain things. 
about nature, about God, um, about societies, that after World War I really began to unravel in many ways. Um, the idea of free will, uh, the idea uh, of responsibility uh, that we had to families, uh, the idea of the power of the individual. Uh, all of these things really began to change, I think, in big ways uh, after World War I. And these two stories come out of that period, which we could even define by its use of sentiment. And that's what the question will involve. The, the, the idea that uh, when we write in sentimental terms, um, we're accepting certain values. And in fact, writing sentiment, and I think you'll find this if you do your research, it's really about manipulation. It's about the author manipulating certain uh, responses in the reader. Uh, the way that a melodramatic story on television um, with lots of uh, 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 deaths, uh, violent deaths, or uh, use of animals, puppy dogs, or a certain kind of music. All this is used to manipulate your response, manipulate your emotions, to touch you at an emotional level. And I think these two stories are examples of sentimental writing from that period. Though they are very different. Um, you'll note, if you do some research on the gift of the Magi, that uh, this story was considered a somewhat, quote, lowbrow. For one thing, it was written for, uh, uh, it was written for a journal, for a, for a newspaper, magazine. And O. Henry uh, rarely read today, beyond this one story, um, knew how to manipulate his readers on a weekly basis. And, of course, the magic of this story is its plotting. The White Heron is a little bit different. It does also manipulate your emotions, but in a much more subtle manner. And while it contains uh, something at the end uh, in, in somewhat the same way that A&P um, enlightens you at the end and um, looking forward to the next story, Araby, by James Joyce. Um, it uh, has a bit of a surprise for us at the end. Um, and, and you can look back at the story as you're reading it and see how uh, uh, Jewett has, has uh, built her story in order to uh, uh, develop your responses to her young girl. And it's a wonderful story, of course, um, and, and it should be recognizable to everyone in this class because, of course, it was written in Maine, it's about Maine, and uh, Jewett, of course, is uh, one of Maine's greatest contributions to literature. So, um, think about those issues, sentiment, manipulation, and the era in which uh, it, they were written. And these are all things, uh, if not mentioned in the text, uh, are out there to be learned. And that's part of developing those tools of understanding, is to reach out beyond what I can tell you, what the uh, anthology can tell you, and to touching base with so many of the wonderful resources available to you through the Internet. And that's what you need to be doing. Uh, now, uh, just checking to make sure I've uh, I've touched on everything. Change of order of of stories, um, <clears throat> importance of thesis, um, reading other people's submissions. Uh, I will this week be developing a second uh, discussion, um, so look for that. Thank you for those who have contributed to the first discussion, uh, and. Um, Please uh, check up on your peers. Read the other. Read the other submissions. Uh, it'll be well worth your while if you want to develop a uh, a, a stronger a grade for you. And uh, again, we're we're beyond the midpoint, I believe. And um, so now it's time to think about that that final grade. And uh, I want everyone to feel uh, satisfied that. Uh, 
uh, uh, that they've gotten the grade they deserve. So um, I think that's I think that's all I wanted to say. Um, we'll have uh, only one more assignment this week after the, tomorrow, and uh, then you'll have a weekend. Get a break from some of that, all that hard work you're doing in this class and uh, some of the hard work you're doing outside of class, as I understand. And I am still looking for Skype meets. Um, but I am still putting it off. So stay tuned. Thanks a lot, everyone. Speak with you soon.